Hey there, Internet. You're probably wondering what this weird metal box is. You're probably also wondering what it does and why is it important. So, <laughs> let's find out. For starters, you can even see it says it right here at the bottom. This is an audio generator, also called a function generator. So now that you know what it does, I'm sorry, now you know what it's called, well, what does it do? Well, let's turn it on and find out. We're going to reset just a couple knobs so they're in the right position, and we'll turn it on. Now you can even see the pilot light here is turned on, and it's glowing red, so that means it's on. We're going to give this a second, because it's a tube-powered... So, yes, it's not transistor, it's an older model, and it's tube-powered, but it's still a very good audio generator, function generator. Now, we have a speaker hooked up to it right there, you can see the speaker. And what you're hearing is exactly what this thing does. It generates a tone. Now, we can also change the frequency of this tone by turning this dial here, or in... Another case, you can call it changing the pitch. You can also bring it back down. And we also have a frequency range here. So... Right now, how you would figure this out is, this is at 20, and then you multiply it by 100. So that would give you 2,000. So right now, you are hearing a 2,000 kilohertz wave. I'm sorry, 2,000 hertz wave or a 2 kilohertz wave. Then we can bring it up. There you go. You do it again. 60 times 100 is 6,000. So that is a 6 kilohertz or 6,000 wa hertz wave, what you're hearing now. Now, again, with this, you can turn it down. It's a little quiet on the lower frequencies. But same thing. You can turn it in. And if we put it back at the 60, 60, this time we have it on the 10 multiplier, and you can hear that the frequency has dropped. So then 60 times 10 is 600, so what you're hearing now is a 600 hertz wave. You can also do, and of course you have your output knob here that changes the volume. Here it gets quieter gets louder and we also have a sine and square wave and again you can hear it gets quieter and louder with the output and it's the same thing so there's 200 Hertz There's 800 hertz. Right about there is a kilohertz or a th thousand hertz. Again, we can switch this back over. So I'll turn this off for a second because I know some people are headache prone. <laughs> So now you're probably wondering, all right, I know what it does, I know what it's called, but what's the purpose of a magical blue box that makes tones? Well, think of it less as tones and more as signals, as a, as a nice pure sine wave. So this can produce a pure sine wave and a pure square wave. Now, for something like... 
a sine wave, this would be good for testing things like amplifiers and filters. So if you had found a stereo system that you wanted to repair, or you wanted to build a an amplifier, or you wanted to build a some kind of filter, either a high frequency filter or a low frequency filter, this is what you could use to test it. Now what you would do is you can take this signal and hook it up to the input of something, and then you can take an oscilloscope here and hook it up to the output. Now, if you don't know what an oscilloscope is, I would definitely recommend de definitely recommend checking out the video, and I'll put a link down in the description. All about oscilloscopes, and I think we'll probably even throw in one or two other good videos on oscilloscopes. So, let's turn this on, and we'll turn this to a nice So, now that we've turned this on, we've set our knobs and everything back, you can see that on the oscilloscope, you see the signal. So this tone that you're hearing from the speaker is not is when it uh, when this tone that you're hearing from the speaker is also the equivalent of this sine wave here that you're seeing on the oscilloscope so basically what's happening is the signal that this is putting out to not only the speaker and the oscilloscope is being can be used and interpreted different ways. The speaker is taking that signal and turning it into sound. The oscilloscope is here and turning it into a visual sine wave. Now, if we had a, a piece of equipment that was hooked up in between the oscilloscope, I'm sorry, the oscilloscope and the audio generator here, like right about where our speaker was, it would actually change what we're seeing here. So it may... And with this, you can perform different tests. So if you wanted to see if your amplifier is working at all different frequencies. And we'll just set that to the right dials. You could tune through the frequencies. And if the waveforms are not what you expected, then you know there's something wrong. But if everything looks the way it should and sounds the way it should, then that's how you know your circuit is working. And again, you can see, and we'll adjust our oscilloscope here. Now you can see, once again, we did it on the lower frequencies. You can tune through. Now this is great for the analog equipment. Such a, you can, and for at testing more analog based devices like amplifiers and stereo systems and uh, filters, you know, whether it's a high pass or low pass or whatever type of filter. But what about something like a square wave? Well, that's great for testing digital. Now you can see right now, let's get a nice. Let's get a nice sine wave here, and if we switch over from sine wave to square wave, just that right there, the same thing happens, and not only that, the tone is different. So once again, and you can see the diff the wave changes. Okay, so now that you're one, you can, you're probably wondering, and we'll turn that down for those who <laughs> get dizzy because of tones. Hopefully, this hasn't made anybody super kind of problematic. But you're probably wondering. All right, you can understand how a sine wave can work through an amplifier, but how would square waves work for something like a digital circuit? Well, if we turn this back up, 
and we disconnect our speaker, we adjust it. Here, you can see that it kind of makes a square wave. And these upper parts would be considered an on, and these lower parts would be considered an off. So if you wanted to send a digital signal to a digital circuit, there you go. There's your on, you could do your on, your off, your on, or in this case, one zero one zero one zero on off on off on off. And again, so if you wanted to change the timing of it, you would just turn your dial, and once again, the frequency or the rate that it would turn on and off changes. Well, YouTube, that is why an audio generator and a function generator is used in digital and not only digital electronics, but all electronics and why it's important. Thanks for watching. I recommend that you check out some of my other videos on oscilloscopes and we'll have links down to the in description. And if you like electronics, computers, or just any form of technology in general, you gotta not, you gotta subscribe to this channel and check out some of our other great videos on nerdy and sciencey topics and technology topics. Thanks for watching.